A new dawn of leadership has surfaced in some of sub-Saharan Africa's major economies. Angola, Zimbabwe and South Africa all have new presidents at the helm. And while the clampdown on corruption and poor governance is top of the agenda, Motlabane Modupe, who's regional analyst at Political Economy Southern Africa, joins us to take a closer look at the extent to which this sees their respective economies charting a new course from a growth and investment perspective. Thanks so much, Motlabane, for uh, joining us today. So if we thought that uh, the end of 2017 was a game changing uh, a game changer it's continued into this year with South Africa taking over the baton and then quickly handing that over to Ethiopia with its prime minister standing down uh, following months of intensifying uh, public protest what have you made of the extent to which social and citizenry discontent and very vocal opposition is triggering political change well uh, particularly these three countries that poor governance and corruption was high. So the new leaders are coming in with uh, the bandwagon of restoring the economy and rebuilding it. However, due to certain political uncertainties, there is a positive term, however, there's slow growth. Mm -hmm. We just need to give them time. For South Africa, particularly, is the issue of land distribution. In Zimbabwe, the upcoming elections, which everyone is a bit skeptical because it's the same party. Absolutely. Let's go yes. into that because while we've got this euphoria uh, taking a hold and a whole lot of optimism around uh, the kind of uh, new course these economies are potentially being set on, uh, the skeptics say that those who were members of the governing party uh, presiding over much of the corruption and poor governance that did come into play are now in control and are only now speaking out against, uh, you know, against what has been at play. So how significant is that for you and how much skepticism do you hold? For now, I say, you know, we need to give them time, but people need to leave the popularity and they need to look at the policies. What are they bringing to the table? Mm -hmm. For uh, our very own president, he's in the forefront of, you know, expropriation without compensation and the whole issue of land distribution. But we still need to, it's very blurry because currently when uh, it's still the willing buy, willing seller option, and that is, it hasn't worked. Uh, and also people, particularly the farmers, they increase the value of the land. So it's, we still need time. However, I'm very, very optimistic around it. With what has been said, uh, what kind of tone has it set for sub-Saharan Africa as a whole from an investment perspective where all three territories are quite emphatic about the fact that their countries are now open for business? Okay. Well, with that, it's... It's uh, investors particularly, they were very jittery around it. However, investment flows are going in. People are very optimistic and business confidence has built up. With um, Angola, the mm -hmm. current, the cur they have removed the currency peg from the dollar. So uh, it's very optimistic and people see growth in that. Uh, for Zimbabwe recently, the president recently got a, got a, a, a loan from China. Mm -hmm which is people are skeptical around it because it's not just a loan, but rather the fine clause. What else is included in there? And we have to uh, see what happens and uh, unfolds. Absolutely. Amongst uh, some of the changes have been the fact that South African nationals no longer require a visa uh, to travel into Angola. Same for Zimbabwe. Do you see South Africa following suit necessarily on that front? Because that could start emboldening uh, the regional growth agenda. Yes, these are particular principles uh, we found in, in finding the SADC as well, you know, the regionalism and being one. Mm -hmm. However, with in South African context, uh, our history, we, very, uh, we have a lot of xenophobia. So we have to be very careful around that. And the government cannot just say, oh, here yeah, our borders are open. But rather, let's look at internally, how people are going to deal with that internally, because it only, only takes is a month. Xenophobia can start like that. Absolutely. That's a very uh, fine line uh, to uh, actually walk at this stage. Uh, what this all suggests, though, is that the politics of fear uh, may finally be withering away. Uh, what country is sitting on your radar screen in terms of where we could potentially see radical political change next? For me, I see Lesotho because there was debacle about the coup and just political uncertainty in the region. So we have to see what happens in there and 
uh, what unfolds, particularly with the policies, we mm -hmm. really need to look at the policies of Lesotho because they're an inland country, so trade mm -hmm. is not so fast. But I see um, change happening there. Well, let's leave it there. Thanks so much, uh, Matlabane, for joining us uh, this evening. Of course, uh, Matlabane Modupe is a regional analyst at Political Economy Southern Africa. And up next, Kenya's bid to try and level the playing field in the telecommunications sector almost saw the splitting of Safaricom from its dominant mobile money platform, M-Pesa. Now that that's off the table, we catch up with the regulator about what measures they're now considering.